Hey guys, what's going on? Um, it has definitely been a minute since I made a video and I've had a lot of people messaging me asking me, hey, are you okay? What's going on? And I really do appreciate it. I'm actually surprised people, for the most part, noticed me, uh, me being gone for a couple of weeks. So it was nice to know that you guys were thinking of me. Um, first of all, everything is okay. Nothing sort of drastic has happened or anything like that. I'm fine. Um, I just needed a bit of time really to catch up on things. Uh, when I started this channel, it was just after the heart of COVID sort of um, lockdowns and things like that up here in Brisbane anyway. And I had a lot of free time on my hands at that point. Um, you know, uh, I've mentioned to you guys that I have a couple of businesses, one I have of my own and one I work on with my wife. And throughout that early sort of um, March period, uh, Feb and March even, um, things really slowed down, which is to be expected. You know, everything was shut down. Um, we had a lot of legislation we had to adhere to in one of those, in one of those businesses. Um, so it was definitely challenging. And I kind of took that opportunity to go, well, I've got a bit of time up my sleeve. I might as well start something that I've wanted to do for ages. And um, it happened to be a great time to do it. Um, so yes, we, we I sort of started the channel. Um, things kind of got really caught up in it. And all of a sudden we had 10,000 subscribers and I couldn't believe it. And it was just, it was insane. And I was trying to pump out more and more and more content because I truly loved doing it. And then um, I guess, everything caught up and work caught up because things are getting a bit more sort of normalized now back up here in Brisbane. Um, my de things were piling up on my desk at work. My inbox was getting full and I just wasn't managing everything the way that I would like to manage it. And unfortunately at that point in time, what had to go for a couple of weeks was the channel. Um, and truth be told at that point, I didn't really think it would be a couple of weeks. I thought it might take me five or six days to catch up on it. And, um, and then I'll be back here making videos again every week or so. Um, but in the end, um, it took a lot longer and even right now I'm still catching up and it kind of has made me realize that um, I need to have a long think about the direction of this channel and how I can also manage my time well enough to run my businesses and do this at the same time while trying to do other things in my life um, and achieve other goals that I have. So um, by no means is this me making a video saying, guys, this was fun, I'm out. Um, it's more so about me trying to put together a bit of a, um, uh, I guess, a, put together a bit of a pitch for you guys to understand how this works and how my videos might not be as regular as they once were. And one thing you're going to get from this video is probably there's no answer to any of this right now. I don't have an exact plan um, on how I'm going to start getting back to full-time videos. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, throughout the Christmas period when things are a little slower for us at work, I can get back on here and make even more videos. But at this point in time, uh, my goal is to just keep putting out videos, hopefully every week or fortnight. Um, and that's really all I can commit to at this point in time. However, there are a couple of other things that I wanna talk about. And the time away from the channel, and actually from the market, because I haven't been watching the market for a couple of weeks now in any real detail. I kind of log on before I go to bed and um, see what's going on you know, around the world. Uh, I think there was probably 10 days in a row I didn't even look at my portfolio um, because it just was no interest to me. I didn't, you know, my investments that I'm making, I don't really care what they're doing short term. Uh, somebody commented, in, I think in the Compounding Crew um, private Facebook group, and they said, oh, Chris, what do you think about uh, Think Child Care? It's, it went down, uh, I think it was down, they said 70 or 80 cents. And I said, oh, I don't know. I didn't actually I didn't actually know it was down. And by the time I looked at it, it come back up again. So I wish I knew I might have bought some more, but uh, I didn't get the opportunity because I didn't know. Uh, and that's often how, I guess, these things work for me. Um, I don't look at my portfolio every day. I used to when I, you know, when I started, I was always looking minutes, hours, you know, I was always on there checking it out. And maybe that's the stage that you're in at the moment as well. But for me, uh, I find that the more I look at my portfolio, sometimes the worse of an investor I become. Um, sometimes you just have to trust your gut, make a choice and hold the company. Um, and yes, of course, there are circumstances um, where you may no longer want to do that if things are changing in your investment plan. But for me, nothing has changed short term. Um, I was very heavily cash coming in to COVID, coincidentally. Um, and, and I think that 
Uh, yes, I probably did miss a couple of opportunities in March. However, we don't really know how that plays out at this point in time. So yes, I'm very sort of content with where my portfolio is at right now. Um, the million dollar portfolio is sitting, uh, I think around $18,000. I've got to check. I will put an update. Uh, there'll be a video with an update on the million dollar portfolio coming out shortly um, where we go over the stats and where it's at and if I've bought anything and things like that. Um, but even my personal portfolio right now is at 82% cash and that wasn't a deliberate choice. I wasn't trying to go, oh, I'm timing the market. I think this is the top and I want to buy at the bottom. Um, it's just how it worked out. Um, after 2017, when I stopped trading, I had almost 100% cash. There were very few positions I held through from then. And uh, from that point, I never really found uh, an entry point on stocks that I wanted to buy. Now, looking back, you can obviously see them, but it's, it's harder at the time. Uh, when I finished trading, I took a long time off, um, even really f looking at stocks altogether. Um, I, was, I was looking at the market once a week, seeing what was going on, um, and that was pretty much it. So uh, at the start of 2019, I kind of I got back into things, and at that point, I wasn't really um, interested in too much that was going on. Um, and like I said, if I could look back now, I'm sure there were a lot of opportunities, but I didn't find them at the time. So... I'm still sitting around that point with cash and uh, I'm just dollar cost averaging it in every month. Which then brings me to my next point. And this one here, I guess, is um, something I've said a lot and is written on the wall behind me and has been in every video, but it's the fact that I'm not an expert. And it creates an extremely challenging space for someone like me that loves investing, has a bit of experience doing it, and would like to provide as much knowledge to people in an educational sense as possible. But has to also negate very tight regulations in Australia. And the problem that we have is that we're in a very real world scenario here. People that are watching these videos are investing. And I always try to say to people, don't listen to what I'm saying and act on it. Listen to what I'm saying and research more. Talk to professionals and then understand. But then I get emails, and I get a lot of emails, a lot of comments. Um, I've probably had, uh, I have an Excel spreadsheet where I keep all of the comments that are questions that I haven't responded to. And I've easily got over a thousand comments now on that spreadsheet or questions on that spreadsheet. And I will try and get to them all if possible. But you realize when you're reading through these comments, and especially the emails, because the emails are very personal. They're people that are emailing you directly um, away from all of this that is YouTube and giving you very raw information and asking for genuine advice. Um, and it brings it to a very real place for somebody like me. Um, when I have somebody emailing me saying, Chris, um, you know, I've got $100,000 and I want to buy these three stocks. Which ones do you think I should buy? That scares the living hell out of me. Because first of all, it's not easy to come by $100,000. Um, and second of all, you can lose it. You can lose half of that or 70% or 80% or all of it in a heartbeat. And I'm not going to be the person that tells you what to buy. And that's what scares me the most is that everybody is so hyped at the moment. Everybody is so excited about this market that just keeps going up. That there's a lot of uh, naivety going on in my opinion. And that scares the hell out of me because you can lose it and you might lose it and you will feel like absolute crap and it will probably scare you away from the market and it could put you back five or 10 years in life or more depending on how much you make and how long it took you to save that $100,000. And that seriously scares the crap out of me. Um, you know, I don't want to be the, the, the reason for somebody losing $100,000 or $50,000 or $20,000. And yes, I can say, look, to make your own choices, it's your problem, not advice. But ultimately, in my core, um, even if I knew I wasn't responsible for that, I just hate to think that somebody was in that position because they felt confident enough after watching one of my videos that they could go and buy a stock from it. And I, I hate the thought of that. And it sounds silly because you're probably thinking, oh, well, why did you start a finance channel then? Well, when you're coming into something like this, you come in with the best of intentions. You come in to try and put some knowledge out there that you think might help people and then you hope that you can just keep doing that on a regular basis. That's the goal. That's what the channel's about. But then you realize that a lot of the people watching these videos are very inexperienced investors. And, um, and that's fine. You've got to start somewhere. There's nothing wrong with being inexperienced. But 
you realize that some of them are making irrational decisions because we live in this world that is so fast paced and social media driven. And it's, it's scary that you're getting people that are going onto YouTube videos, reading Twitter comments, Reddit comments, um, and just buying a stock with so much money and thinking that it's just going to go up. And right now, a lot of them are getting lucky and it is going up. And I want to make it clear, you are getting lucky. Um, you know, uh, and that's not to discount your gains or to discount your, your, what you're doing. But if you're new to the market this year and you think it's normal to put 50 grand down and walk out with 100 in a month or two weeks, it's not normal. It doesn't happen every day. Trust me, go and talk to any of the experienced guys around Australia or the world and they will tell you that that is not sustainable. And if you believe it's sustainable in here, your risk tolerance is just going to get out of control and it will end up in disaster. Um, you know, and that's what scares me. I don't want to encourage people to be doing that type of thing. And I think earlier on, um, although I've never encouraged people to go and buy a stock, not once in any of my videos, um, I do worry that people may interpret it the wrong way, um, and I don't want that. So that's another part of what I'm trying to figure out here is, okay, so what's the direction forward? How do I try and negate um, these types of things? Maybe it's in my videos by talking more about the cons of a company and why I wouldn't invest in it. Um, I did a lot of that with the with the buy now, pay later uh, space um, uh, because you know I believed it was ultra high risk for new investors um, and. I talked a lot about why somebody might not want to invest in, in a business like that. Um, but maybe I should do that with every company I talk about, even the ones that I believe are, are impeccable, because there is a risk that, that they will not stay that way. Um, nonetheless, this is uh, something that, that plays on my mind. It's something that I'm trying to address and figure out uh, a way around it. I don't have an answer in this video. I wish I could come to you in this video with an answer, but I don't have one. Um, it's something that I've been thinking about for a long time and trying to figure out for a long time. Um, but... Um, no, this isn't me going, look, I'm going to stop the channel because I don't want, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of, of somebody losing all their money. It's not that. It's just that I think there's a better way. I think there's a better way to address these issues. I think there's a better way to talk to people about the market. Um, I didn't start this channel to become another Graham Stephan or another Aussie Wealth creation. And all credit to them. I mean, Brandon is destroying it, 133,000 subs or more. Uh, you know, Graham Stephan, 2 million plus. These guys are killing it and they're doing a great job. But I didn't come here to be them. Um, I came here to try and have a different perspective, have a different outlook. Um, and I think I've, I've done that somewhat, but I also think I could do it a lot better. And that's what I'm trying to get towards. And then there's the final point here, which is the time it takes. And I mentioned at the start of the video that things piled up for me. And uh, that happens for everybody in life. I'm not unique there. I'm not special in that sense. But things piled up for me and I had to sort of take a bit of time and get my stuff together and, and, and figure out a better plan. And I think recognizing here that that burnout is a real thing um, is, is kind of healthy for my channel. It's healthy for me to go, look, sometimes I will just need a break for a few weeks. Sometimes I'm just not going to be posting because, you know, it's it, you go through periods where you're extremely motivated to get content out there and then periods where you need to be motivated in other areas, whether it be work, your personal life, or whatever else that might be going on around you. Uh, and then there are the normal day-to-day -day distractions that we all have. Um, and... And for me, um, that's really the direction I want to take this channel in is trying to make it realistic, trying to make it something that is that is that is open and honest. That's why I started the the million dollar portfolio because I wanted something to be in front of people that was real and and um, tangible, something you could see and be like, that's actually possible. The problem is, is that. With this type of, of innovation, and I'm not saying innovation in the sense of I've created something new here, but with the innovation of putting a portfolio on to YouTube comes a huge amount of risk, a liability. Um, it, it puts things, um, it, it draws attention to things that people, generally speaking, don't like to draw attention to because of things like ASIC regulations. So I don't know the exact direction from here. I don't have answers in this video. I just wanted to put something up and talk to you guys about where I was at and what was going on. Um, truth be told, a lot of people aren't going to like, um, you know, what I'm about to say. The fact is, is that most of us, the majority, the significant majority, would be better off in index funds. And that's not my opinion. That is the fact that most people over a long period of time cannot beat the market. Um, and where I come to a crossroads with that is that 
it's not very entertaining content just talking about ETFs. Um, there's only so much you can talk about. Yes, I'm going to buy X amount every month for the next 100 months or 200 months. Um, you know, it's not riveting content, which then leads me to talking about kind of the direction that I might like to go in. Um, I have reconsidered rebranding this channel to encompass more things that I'm interested in in my life and not just the market. Um, I've already spoken to you guys about how I'd like to talk more about business. Um, what I specialize in, for those of you that don't know, um, my weird little niche that I've happened to just found a place in that I seem to do reasonably well at is helping people grow a small business into a medium business. Um, I'm no Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm not going to get you from a dollar to $50 million. Um, where I seem to excel is getting a business from $50,000 to maybe a million dollars um, in revenue. And that's the content I'd like to also put out here on YouTube. But I'm kind of handcuffed at the moment by the finance content doing so well, or it was doing so well. So me taking a bit of time off and lowering the amount of videos I put out was kind of like a self-sabotage, I guess, to go, well, look, I've got nothing to lose now. I can just put out the content I want to put out. Um, so... If you guys would like to see more content on business or other things that, that I have going on at any point in my life, um, feel free to comment below and let me know because that's kind of the direction that I would like to take this channel in. Um, if I look at any given year, I might put out a stock market video every month a business video every month, and then maybe something completely different every month. Whether it be products I might be using to film the videos, talking about different things that I've used in the past and how they might better help, whatever it is. But if that's something you guys are interested in, please comment below and let me know. And yes, although I'd love to see the comments and the support, it probably is the direction that this channel is going to go in either way because I, you have to do what you enjoy. Um, there's no point sitting behind this camera trying to make four stock market videos a month when really I think there's only enough content to make two or one. Um, you know, that content that I'm interested in anyway, and if I'm not interested in the content, these videos become extremely boring very quickly. And look, we have had an awesome ride so far. I think we've got over 11,000 subscribers um, in five months or so. Um, it really is incredible. Uh, I, I could not have dreamt this growth um, this quickly. Um, so I am extremely thankful. Um, and look, if this channel does end up going down a direction of being sort of multifaceted with different types of content, I hope that you guys aren't too turned off by that. But I also need you guys to understand that I've got to love what I'm doing here and I don't want to force out content. It takes a long time for me to sit down and make one of these videos. Well, not this video because I'm just talking to you guys. There was no script or no planning. But normally it takes me a long time to sit down and plan one of these videos, anywhere from a day to four days, sometimes more. Um, and and it's just, it's, it's, it's time consuming. And when you don't feel like making a video that day, it's even more difficult to do. Um, you know, I like talking about the market when there's things to talk about. And I feel like in the last four months, we got a lot of it off our chest. I feel like it's a bit of a waiting game. I feel like it's a patience game. And I feel like doing the basics is what's going to work for me right now. And that's all I've been doing. It's dollar cost averaging into my index funds. And um, we, we took one position last month in Think Childcare. That was pretty much it. Um, we do have that position in Mesoblast. Um, I hadn't looked at the market for a while, like I said. But when I look back... Things got pretty messy, but it looks like it might be recovering now. I don't know. There's a pure spec play, so it really means nothing to me. Um, I've got a few ideas of what we're going to turn that spec play every month into to make it a bit more interesting, but um, we will get to that in another video. Anyway, guys, I do appreciate the support. If you got all the way to the end of this video, you are a true supporter of this channel. Thank you very much, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Cheers.